Hi everybody, my name is Vishesh and today we're going to be analyzing uh, the stress on a fuselage due to internal pressure in Abacus. The problem statement is as follows. Our aircraft fuselage of course must be capable of withstanding a lot of load. Um, in our exercise uh, we've implemented an internal pressure on a structure similar to a Lockheed L1011 commercial aircraft fuselage and our objective is to determine the stress state and the factor of safety in this fuselage panel. The geometry is as shown. Uh, the length and of course the height of the fuselage are uh, 30 inches. The radius of curvature of the fuselage is 100 inches. Uh, the material of the fuselage is an aluminum alloy of yield strength 50, 50 ksi and modulus of elasticity 10.5 msi with a Poisson ratio of 0.33 and the internal pressure on our fuselage is 9 psi. Now the assumptions that we are going with for this exercise is number one that there's no solid window so it's just a window cutout. Number two, the curvature of the fuselage has been ignored. So our radius of curvature here then does not matter. Uh, plane stress is assumed and the effects of bending have been neglected. Now here are the calculations that we're going to be implementing uh, as we go forward in Abacus. Uh, of course, since we're implementing a symmetry type boundary condition because our panel is symmetric, what we're going to do is uh, half the length as well as the height. So our X and Y then become 15 inches each. Uh, our hoop stress and longitudinal stress are calculated from the internal pressure. But these are not the stresses that we'll be implementing directly in Abacus because we're going to be using a shell element. We'll be implementing an edge load, uh, which is the stresses that we get into the thickness of our shell element. So that's for our hoop stress, that is 900, and for our longitudinal stress, that is 450. Let's move on to Abacus now. Welcome to Abacus. Uh, what we're going to get started with is a standard explicit model, essentially a, a standard model. Our first step here is to actually make the part that we're going to be analyzing. So our part is going to be of uh, is going to be a shell of extrusion type. We're going to say our approximate size is a hundred. Uh, it it is it is one of those things that 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 matters very little. So the speciality of the shell part is that you do not need to define all three dimensions, right? So the only dimension that we're going to define is our is one of our lengths. So let's, for example, define our Y length. Uh, I've already placed my cursor and clicked at 0, 0. So I'm going to pick the end point for my line, which is 0, 15, since 15 is the height of my L. Right. Next, uh, I am going to sketch the section for shell extrusion. So now that we, I've done that, I'm going to click Done. And I'm going to give it a depth, which is my X distance, which is 15. So that gives me my basic panel. What I need to do now is draw the cutout. For that, I'm going to select the tool Create Cut Extrude. I will select the plane for my cut, which is essentially this plane. Uh, I will select the edge or the axis that will appear. So that is this axis. I, I can select any axis. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to select this axis for, for the purpose of, of straightness, essentially. So now I'm going to draw my, my window cutout using the Create Lines Rectangle tool. So my starting corner, you can look at the, the coordinates over here. So my starting corner is going to be at minus 7.5, minus 7.5, which is my bottom left corner. Now my the height of my cutout has to be seven and a half and its length has to be five because that's, I essentially have to make a fourth of the window. So since I started minus 7.5, minus 7.5, my Y will be zero 
and my x will be minus 2.5. So that's what my other dimensions will be. So minus 2.5 and 0. So there you go. That's my window. But I also need to create a curvature as has been defined in, in my problem statement. So for that, I'm going to use a fillet tool. My radius is going to be 2, as we've already been told. I'll press Enter, and I'll select these two line segments, which are going to give me my fillet. I'll cross this out. Since I've already sketched the section for the cut, I'm going to click Done. Ask it to make a through cut and press OK. There you go. That's my panel. My next step is to define my material properties. For that, I'm going to go to my material manager and click create. I'm going to name my material aluminum 2.2024P3. I like defining all properties of aluminum. So my mass density, for example, I'll define as 0.1. Uh, pounds per, per, per cubic inch. It's not really required, but for the purpose of fullness. Now, my mechanical property, my most essential important property here is my elastic property. So my Young's model is, which is 10.5 MSI. My Poisson ratio, which is 0.33. I'll also define plastic properties, which I've been given. So 50 KSI at zero strain. So that's my, since that's my wheel stress. And press OK. I dismiss here. What I do next is create a new section. Uh, this will be a shell type section because that is the kind of element that we're going to be working with, which will be homogeneous. I press continue. The thickness of my shell will be 0 0.063, which I've already been given. And of course, my material will be AL2024 T3. I press OK. That's just a section that's been created. I now need to assign that section or, or that material to my part here. So I click Assign Section, select my part, press Done. Ask it to assign Section 1 to my part, and press OK. Next, I move to Assembly. Here I need to create an instance of my part. So I'll call, I'll create a dependent instance for now and press OK. Next I create my, my time step, which will be my first and only time step since this is a steady state analysis. I click on create step. My type of step will be static general and press continue. Use my default properties for now and press OK. Next up, and most importantly, I move to defining my load and boundary conditions. So first I define my boundary conditions. Now we know that we, we've created this symmetric part over here. Now the, the way that Abacus is going to find out that this is a symmetric part and that the analysis has to be replicated across this edge and this edge is by defining a symmetry boundary condition. So I click on Create Boundary Condition. The type will be Symmetry. I press Continue. The region for my boundary condition will... So for this direction, the Z direction, it will be this edge. So I click on this edge and press Done. And ask it to create a Z symmetry. Similarly, now for this edge, for this direction, it has to be Y. So I click on Create Boundary Condition. Type symmetry, press this edge, and say done. Y symmetry, and OK. All right. Next up, I have to define my edge loads, which we discussed in the presentation as well. I click on Create Load. The only type of load that I can define for this type of part is a shell edge load. So I click on Shell Edge Load and press Continue. The first load that we define is for our hoop stress. So I click on this edge and press Done. And our magnitude will be 900. I'll add a minus so that it 
implements the load in the right direction, as we can see here. Next up, another shell edge load for our longitudinal stress. Press continue, select the edge, press done, minus 450, and OK. All right, now our loads have been defined. The only step left is to mesh our part. So first we, oops, first we click on part here, we select our part. We now decide what the general element size of our part is going to be. So for these dimensions, I'm going to put 0.5 for now and press apply seems about reasonable what i'm also going to do is make the mesh more dense around the region where i think my stresses will be highest so around the window so i'm going to click on seed edges select these three edges press down and change the element size to point two. press apply next i'll Click on mesh part. Is it OK? Yes. There you go. My mesh is a little dense. It's a little irregular because of the different element sizes that I've chosen. But we can see that our mesh is denser around here. I also have to assign an element type to my mesh. If I select the region, I want to assign the type to. Press done. For this analysis, we're going to use S8 or S8R elements. So from our standard element library, we select a quadratic geometric order and use default conditions. Press OK. There you go. That's, that's your analysis settings. We move on to Job. Click on Job Manager. Create job one continue use default conditions for now and click submit you can of course monitor your job in this job monitor window Our analysis has started and it's done in one increment. We click dismiss here. We need to look at the results. For a more intuitive look at the results, I like to select plot contours, which gives me a rather colorful look at the results. Um, and as you can see over here, The stresses are highest around the window. Uh, the window has also stressed out a little bit because of the, uh, the stresses that we added. Uh, but more importantly, our highest stress is actually greater than our yield strength. So the, there you go. Those are your results for your abacus analysis.